this is the month of may guys we are talking about getting unstuck of course uh, you might hear a little bit about mental health since this is mental health awareness month and i have a special guest from europe which i'm totally stoked about this is my first guest from europe and uh, amazing woman i've been watching her on threads a lot and on a little bit on instagram but more so threads to see how she sees the world how she's not going at the same pace or the same way as the world is doing things and she's getting a lot of results so tara welcome to the show thank you it's so great to um be here to share my wisdom with the world nice now tara tell the people who don't know you um who who you are and what do you do yeah um i'm a an energetics coach and spiritual guide and i work with mostly female entrepreneurs on all the things energetic, so mindset, emotions, um, but also feminine energy and feminine leadership and connecting with their own spiritual guidance so that they can go out there and attract the lives and the businesses and the financial freedom that they're desiring for themselves. I love it. What, where, have, where have you found this to be an issue? So you had to have seen this be an issue for you to start going this route where did you know or where did you find this to be an issue so for me um personally i do think especially when it comes to you know leading your own business or trying to build your own business i think we're often so get caught up in stories that the world tells us um or you know ways society perceives success or how society thinks a successful business is built mm -hmm. and I do think specifically for women that approach sometimes doesn't work or oftentimes doesn't work because we all know that building a business usually is taught in a way that's very masculine where we have to work really hard we have to like sell a lot we have to um, you know like be really good at making money and like it's very much so approached from logic and strategy and i've seen and also personally experienced that that just doesn't work for a lot of women they end up burning out or mm -hmm. they're just not feeling aligned anymore with what they're doing or they don't even see the success because they just feel all this ickiness and this unaligned feelings this frustration within and this resentment and resistance and so i've realized that as women specifically but not just as women like we all have inheritance gifts within us and we're all um connected with spirit and a higher power that's guiding us and if we open up to that and if we lean into that then this path of creating a successful business becomes so much easier and then of course um i'm of the belief that every result you ever create should stem from your belief system and so if something in your world doesn't look like the way you want it to look like and again i've seen a lot of people struggle and i've personally also had a quite difficult journey with business in the early stages so i very much so think that a lot of the reasons why some people don't succeed in business is because they have belief systems or mm -hmm. energetic blocks that hold them back from attracting the success that they're desiring and that's kind of why Mostly it comes from my own personal experience of, you know, starting my business. And then because the reason I started this was because I had created my dream life and mm. had manifested so much of my vision growing up. And I was like, OK, this this works. There's something here. I have to share this. But then I started this business and I experienced so much challenges on the way that was like okay hold on like something isn't working here so why don't i apply what i did previous with my vision that i had earlier to building a business and that's where kind of things started to shift where i i love i love this <clears throat> where what was your like your biggest struggle starting your business that made you say like hey i, I gotta stop and make some change or uh, what what was that about um so like from the outside it was just i wasn't signing clients i was showing up on social media i had office ready i was ready to do things like sign clients but they were just not coming and of course there were like a lot of 
strategy pieces as well that had to be put into place. But um, I'd say around the like two, two and a half year mark of being in business, I just had built up so much um, resentment and energetic resistance towards signing clients because I'd already done so much strategy work. I had improved my funnels, I had improved my messaging, I had worked with coaches and I was still not seeing the results. And so I built up this inner resentment towards why is it not happening? And I just realized that first of all, um, I was out of alignment with abundance. So my money mindset was quite not in place, um, but also, I was coming a lot from my masculine energy and didn't allow for intuitive guidance um, to lead me in business, which ultimately, and we can go deeper into that too, is how you're going to get the um, messages and the action steps that eventually then lead you to success. Because the thing is that like every strategy, every action step that someone says works it works but mm -hmm. we're all on our individual paths and mm -hmm. like someone incarnates on this earth like with the sole mission of having it really easy to build a successful business but then someone else has to go through a lot of other like lessons and challenges on the way there just because of the life path that they chose before they incarnated and so um, we have to really like take a step back and listen to our intuition in order to receive the guidance that is designed for us for the life path that we chose in order to, um, you know, walk the path of least resistance. So that's kind of the things that I then started to do in order to shift things for myself. I like where or how, how do you show up now on social media where social media is mainly which I don't like, it's mainly everyone has to follow this exact plan, this exact way. And if you don't, you're you're doomed. And if you do, you're automatically gonna be making 10K a month. How do you show up on social media now with all of that, all of those uh, messages coming out? Yeah, so I think that the biggest thing for me, and again, th these are things that I constantly have to remind myself of as well, is to not consume too much to really like now instagram at least has this incredible feature where you can like mute certain words or certain types of content and i i do this i muted everything that has to do with uh social media advice or you know how to gain <laughs> followers or like how to make money online like all these terms i just muted so instagram won't show me that content and then i also muted people that i was following um that do that type of content and generally i try to consume as little as possible on social media so that i don't get all these confusing messages in terms of no but you should do this and then you should do that and you know constantly get into this then thought cycle of i need to do things in a certain way and then like essentially trying to implement all of that finding it doesn't work and then like changing the strategy all over again so not exposing myself to too much information catching myself every time i get get into that thought cycle of um no someone said this i should be doing this so like recognizing that and then going back to no no i don't need to do this right mm. i'm on my own path i know what i need to be doing like let's trust myself here for a moment and then making time in my day to uh be with my own thoughts and to maybe meditate and receive like we all have different ways uh of receiving intuitive guidance for me is um, either, either sitting in stillness or meditating or going on a walk and I'll implement these things in my day to create space for these intuitive downloads to come to me and then I will take note I've got a list in my journal of um, these intuitive hits that I get and then I will go in every week every day to review that list and see okay what of that action steps can i do today um, and then i'm going to work them off like an usual to-do list and when it comes to content creation specifically i just i just try to speak from my heart and i'm trying to approach content creation a way that I approach conversations like that, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I am always imagine like a friend of mine sitting there. Um, what do they need to hear right now? What what do, what do I feel called to share with them? Um, and also something that's huge for me is like, if I'm not inspired, if I feel like I don't have anything to share right now, I'm not going to show up. I'm not going to create content for content's sake. Um, 
I of course have a list if I'm inspired I take notes and if I'm uninspired and have an idea on my notes um, list I can go to that but if I generally don't feel like showing up I'm not gonna show up I, re I love that I love that do you find living in Europe and I'm not sure if you lived in Europe all of your life have you yes I okay grew up okay <laughs> okay do you find living in Europe makes it easier to adopt that type of mindset when it comes to business or do you find it harder I find it harder because huh. Yeah, because there's so much shoulds and have tos that are being taught and especially like in Korea, I think in corporate and business, there is so much um, noise around this is the perfect path you should be going down. This is the way you should be doing things. And I'm, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. So my dad also has his own business. He always had um, ever since I can remember. Um, long before I was born and there's always this like and my brother is also very much into entrepreneurship and there's always this like like clear outlined path of this is how you should be doing things and then as soon as you break out of that a little bit everyone's gonna say like no you're not gonna be successful because you don't follow that path mm. and so I think it's harder to adopt that mindset of I'm gonna follow my own guidance because everyone else around you tells you not to i i can attest to that i agree with that and i think it's it's similar here um it's similar here and i start to wonder why we treat business as if it has to be a one size fits all and yeah. everyone has to do it the same exact way because quite frankly like you said sometimes your belief systems are are wrong and you don't know it sometimes you're like you said you you're resenting a process of resenting clients and might not know so how, how does how does tara with being a businesswoman and all of the hats that you wear how do you handle your mental health such a good question um again i'm trying to lead it from my feminine energy as often as possible so meaning i try to really have a lot of white space in my schedule um where i just have no calls no to do's nothing just like white space um so that i can lay in the sun or um, journal if i feel like it or take a meditation um go on a walk whatever you know nourish nourishes my soul i also make sure that i do check in with myself regularly um so very intentionally uh check in with myself how i'm feeling usually do that in my morning um and also at night time also cleanse my energy um i'm a lot into reiki and things like that so really make sure that um my energy my energetic body is cleansed because obviously our mind body and soul they're all kind of influencing each other and if we're mentally not well then we also not like physically not well sometimes but also the vice versa right you got to take care of your emotional health but also your physical health in order to for your mental health to be well so i also do you know the basics like working out and things um and one other thing that i think is really important in in terms of mental health that i'm implementing myself a lot too is to get help every time i feel like i'm mm. stuck mentally i'm in a pr thought process that i can't get out myself um i'm gonna go get a spiritual guidance session or i'm gonna go see a therapist or talk to a friend and just get it out or talk to my partner right um to get it out to get a fresh perspective because sometimes um we're so caught up in the stories that we tell ourselves that it's that even, you know, a walk or um, a bath or running doesn't really help because we are still so caught up in our mind. And in order to get out of that cycle, we have to get a fresh perspective. And we usually get that through other people. I like that because usually when we get stuck, we usually result in, we usually go back to like, let me just keep digging myself where you might just need to talk it out and someone gives you another clear perspective. Something you had put on, I think it was threats. I think you um, said, um, my. I, it was, I think you said my boss gave me three to four hours off. 
Yeah. <laughs> Off today. How does it feel being an entrepreneur versus working for like a boss? Um, it feels both good and challenging at times. Obviously, there is amazing sides like being able to take a four hour long lunch break or, you know, taking a day off to go somewhere for a long weekend or something. It's amazing. It's amazing to be able to do what you love, right? And decide, okay, I don't like doing this task. So I'm gonna outsource it. It's amazing. But also, um, I think there's things that a lot of people don't really talk about with entrepreneurship that are really hard, like having like the, the financial pressure that's on yourself, right? You have to be the one generating the money because otherwise there is no money. And um, someti sometimes, because there is like no consistency, there is no cons like, of course, at a certain stage in your business, there will be consistency, but especially in the early stages, like as a small business, there is no consistency, right? There is no consistent paycheck and you have to really make sure that you're taking care of your mental health and also of your um, energetic frequency in order to sustain those um, phases where you may be your you know, mid ma mid of the month and you haven't signed a new client or something. And then you just have to like process that and navigate that on a nervous system level that you're going to be okay. Right. Even if mm -hmm. there's just like two days left of the month and you just still have to like pay bills and things. So I think that's definitely something. And then also, especially if you're a solo entrepreneur, having to make a lot of decisions by yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have anyone to l rely on and entrepreneurship is a lo lot of responsibility. And that sometimes can be a heavy weight on, your, on yourself, right? If you yeah. have to make all these decisions and if you don't know what to do in order to you know, move forward and you eventually have to make it um, out with yourself, at least in, in you know, the early stages, um, when you don't have a team and even if you have a team, right, there is a lot of decisions that only you can make as the um, business owner. So I do think it's both amazing and challenging at the same time. I I want social media. I'm going to make sure I get this that part of the clip because I need social media to hear that about entrepreneurship. Yeah. If you don't work eventually, especially in the early stages, you don't you don't get paid. But you said something that was really, really cool. It, being an entrepreneur, especially a small business owner um, or a solopreneur, a lot of the decisions you have to make on your own. And I think people feel that entrepreneurship is easier than working for somebody. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's not like working for someone is so much easier. The, the hard thing about working for someone else is that you will probably have to do work that you don't like. And that in itself is also very challenging. Like. And I think if you once you found your dharma, once you found your purpose, it's harder to do things that you don't like mm -hmm. and work for someone else than bearing all the uncertainty and the decision making and the roller coaster of entrepreneurship. But working for someone else is easier for sure. It's way, it's way, it's way easier. You're guaranteed the same paycheck, which is not, which is not bad. You're guaranteed the same paycheck. You're usually guaranteed the same amount of hours and there's consistency. But what's the flip side of working for somebody else only when you have found your purpose? I think it's just once you found your purpose, you know everything makes sense and you really like you finally know what you love doing and you want to spend the rest of your life doing that thing. And so if you cannot do that in your work, in, in your corporate job, then it's going to be hard. And every time you work for someone else, you're going to think about how you're not going to be able to do the thing that is your purpose, right? And mm. how your gifts are wasted too. Um, and of course, there's maybe jobs that can come very close to um, what it's like to live our purpose. So if, if you've realized, okay, your purpose is to um, help online businesses make money on social media, then you can have like a social media um, job somewhere at an agency or something and can come really close to like living your purpose, but it's not gonna be the same since you're not gonna be able to make the impact that you could be making if you were 
making it on on your own like for me for example i could work in a yoga studio and you know do reiki sessions there or in a gym and you know give mental um like health training there or whatever um but it's not the same as working with this specific person that i know i can help the best in the ways that i want to help them mm -hmm. and um also with, with the freedom of creativity that really helps me to uh, deliver my best services because in Cobra jobs, we are always in some way put in, in a box and we are stripped of a lot of freedom that mm. al allows us to really step into the purpose and let our gifts flow out in the way they need to flow out in order for us to make the biggest impact that we can possibly have. I like, I'm going to make sure I get these clips because <laughs> <laughs> why don't you just like put the whole episode on social media? It would have been like the whole 30 minutes. <laughs> you guys there, what would be advice if someone came to you, male or female, and they were like, you know, Tara, I, I really want to start my business. What are three things I should do? What would you say? So first of all, um, and I think that's more like a disclaimer, like take to heart what we just talked about it's not easy like if you want to start your own business because you think it's an easy way out like don't do it because you're gonna eventually give up you're gonna suffer a lot and it's just not gonna be fun and you're never gonna like succeed if you're doing it for that um the first advice that i would say is figure out really well what it is that you want to do like what lights your um soul on fire like find your purpose because i think starting a business just to have a business doing something that you're mediocre enjoying it it's not mm. gonna work because you need something that really lights a fire under your butt in order to sustain those harder times because there will be a lot of times where you go and question yourself why am i am i even doing this like what do i do this for like it's so much easier to work for someone else and so you really need that that why and that passion for the work that you're doing in order to keep going. So that's the first thing I would say. The second thing is work on your inner alignment, work on your mindset, work on your um, energetic uh, blueprint. So the beliefs that you're having about business, about money, um, but also the emotions that you're holding towards money and towards business. Also, you know, confidence in um, your, your ability to deliver the services that you're saying you're going to deliver and then the third part is to work on your spiritual connection mm. um because eventually your spiritual connection is your best business strategy right of course then you're gonna go in and like hire someone or you know take courses google whatever you need to be doing to set up your individual business whatever that may be but eventually your spiritual connection and your connection with your intuition that's going to be your best business strategy that's the the strategy that you need in order to really figure out what is what action steps are going to take you to where you want to be um with your unique life path in consideration i love it i love it so Tara, we usually end the show with a couple of random questions that have nothing amazing to do about anything that we just talked about. So you ready? Okay, I'm ready. All right. First question. What's the craziest thing that Tara has done? Um, wow. Well, uh, I went to live two years in a third world country um mm. to see if i want to marry my now husband wow and it, it worked it worked <laughs> but you decided to live in europe though um yeah we decided because kiva is just not a place i want to live um but i since he couldn't come um to see if it works here i had to go and live there wow for two years yeah, because one year was originally to see how the relationship unfolds and then the visa process took another year. So it ended up being two years. Wow, that's bold. That's bold. Yeah. Okay. Tara's favorite movie. Crown. It's not a movie, but it's a series and I really love it. It's so inspiring. Okay. 
um, what's one thing that Taro wants to do in life that she hasn't done yet? I want to travel Vietnam um, and Thailand. I had the flights booked, but they got all cancelled in COVID. So, oh. and I, I never made it there since I went to live in Cuba. So I definitely want to do that still. Okay. Okay. What's the reason behind it? Um, I just like my early twenties, I traveled, like I was a digital nomad for six years and like during university, I always wanted to just travel without a return ticket and because I always had to like come home to like do exams or something like that. Um, and I just really wanted to do that after university, but then, and I had all my flights booked, but then, uh, they all got canceled because of COVID. And so it's like something that I still want to do. It, it feels like unfinished business to me, um, that I, that's kind of left from that, you know, twenties chapter. I'm going to turn 30 in a few years. So, uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. Last question. What made you accept the invite to come on this podcast? Uh, first of all, um, we got connected over a mutual friend. So mm -hmm. I think that's always some, like, I love connecting with, uh, friends of friends because I feel like we always have things in common and we just connect. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something. And then also, uh, I love doing podcasts in general because I love listening to, to them and they're always so inspiring. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, essentially, we are all here just to, you know, share bits and pieces of our gifts, of our stories in order to inspire other people. And I do definitely believe, and that's, you know, whether I'm holding space for someone to share this story on my platforms or I get to share my story on other people's platforms, we all essentially work on this collective mission of uh, co um, contributing to the awakening of the world. And so every opportunity I get to do that in a way that feels aligned with me, like for example, through friends or friends who I connect with, mm -hmm. that, that, that are opportunities I'm gonna say yes to. I love it, I love it. Tara, how can people find you? I'll make sure to put it in the show notes, but how can people go find you and, and learn more about what you, what you do? Yeah, so social media, obviously, you mentioned threads and Instagram already. My handle is tara.fisher on both. And then uh, I have a podcast too, which is called the Be Magnetic Podcast. Um, these are probably the best two places to connect with me and learn more about what I do and just be up to date about everything else <laughs> that I'm awesome. up to. Awesome. And we'll make sure we spell Fisher right in the show notes so you guys, you guys may miss the C that's inside. I've heard a last name. Tara, thank you so much for coming. I learned a lot and I learned a lot about you. And I'm pretty sure the audience is going to love what they hear and they're going to go and build amazing businesses. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Have a good one.